One thing that is inevitable in a project is risks. There are risks involved with a project's processes when a production team begins a new project and even in an ongoing project. Some risks can be predictable, while others can arise at any phase of the project. However, some measures can help limit these risks and predict their consequences. These procedures are useful for identifying, assessing, evaluating, and monitoring risks and their associated effects. In this video, we will understand everything about risk mitigation and its strategies. But before we get started, I would like to address the agenda for today's session. We will start our session with a brief understanding of what risk mitigation is. Then, we will talk about the top risk mitigation strategies with examples and understand how to create a risk mitigation plan. Moving on, we will discuss risk mitigation best practices and conclude the session by discussing some of the widely used risk mitigation tools. I hope the agenda was clear. Before we start with our session, if you like this video, do subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, to learn more about project management and its practices, check out Invensys Learning's Project Management Certification Training on PRINCE2, Project Management Fundamentals, and MSP. All of the necessary information is given in the description box below. Without any further ado, let's get started with our first topic, what is risk mitigation? Risk mitigation is the planning and creation of strategies and solutions to minimize threats to project goals or risks. A project team can adopt risk mitigation measures to identify, monitor, and analyze risks and the effects of a particular project, such as developing a new product. In addition to addressing issues and their impact on a project, risk mitigation also includes the implementation of countermeasures. This was just a brief introduction to risk mitigation. Now, let us move on to our next topic and talk about the top risk mitigation strategies with examples. Appropriate risk mitigation involves determining potential risks to a project, such as team revenue, product failure, and scope creep, and then implementing strategies to reduce or eliminate the risk. Here in risk mitigation planning and monitoring, the following methods can be used. First, accept and assume risk. The acceptance strategy might include cooperation among the team members to determine the project's potential risks and if the resulting consequences are acceptable. In addition to recognizing risks and their associated effects, team members can also identify and assume the risk's potential weaknesses. This method is widely used to identify and understand the risks that can impact the output of a project, and its objective is to bring these risks to the attention of the company so that everyone working on the project has a shared awareness of the risks and their consequences. Now, the following are some examples that illustrate how the acceptance strategy might be applied for frequently recognized risks. First, cost impacting risks. The accept technique can be used to detect cost affecting risks. For instance, a project team can use the accept method to identify risks to the project budget and develop measures to reduce the risk of going over budget, so that all team members are aware of the risk and its potential implications. Second, schedule impacting risks. The accept technique might aid in identifying potential scheduling risks, such as maintaining the project on schedule to reach the deadlines. Third, risks affecting performance. These sorts of risks might involve performance concerns such as team productivity or product performance, such as software or manufactured items, and can be recognized and acknowledged as part of the project planning process, so that all members are aware of possible performance risks. The second risk mitigation strategy is avoidance of risk. The avoidance strategy shows the accepted and expected risks and effects of a project, as well as the chances of avoiding such risks. Some techniques for executing the avoidance strategy include planning for risk and then taking precautions to prevent it. For instance, a project team can opt to perform product testing to eliminate the danger of product failure before the final production. Here are some other examples, where avoidance strategies can be used. First is risk to schedule. By recognizing potential concerns that might have an impact on the project's timing, it is possible to avoid schedule impacts. Important deadlines, due dates, and final delivery dates can be impacted by risks, such as being too optimistic about a project's duration. The avoidance method can help the project team prepare strategies to prevent schedule conflicts, such as by generating a controlled schedule that shows exact time allocations for planning, design, testing, and retesting, as well as making any required adjustments. In order to prevent time management risks, it is also possible to schedule non-working hours. Second is risk to cost. Avoiding cost difficulties is another use of this method. For instance, a project team can outline all anticipated costs and account for any costs that can arise in order to avoid the consequences of going over budget. Third is a potential risk to performance. 
as a result of mitigating performance risks, such as insufficient resources to do the task, preliminary design, and bad team dynamics, a project team can find potential strategies to prevent these kinds of risk situations that can result in performance concerns. Next, to avoid the risk of product failure with less durable materials, a production team can test more durable product materials. Similarly, if there is a performance risk within the dynamics of the project team, interactive team management can be employed to prevent team difficulties. The third risk mitigation strategy is controlling risk. Team members can also implement a control strategy when mitigating risks to a project. This method works by taking into consideration risks recognized and acknowledged and then taking actions to mitigate or eliminate the consequences of these risks. Some examples that demonstrate how control measures can be used for risk mitigation are First, controlling the risk of schedule. Diversifying tasks and the time required to perform them across the project team allows for the management of scheduling effects. Control techniques can include keeping track of the time required to accomplish each job and allocating particular tasks to team members based on the time required to complete each activity. The project team could also take into consideration time management measures to better reduce any risk to the project schedule. Second is controlling performance risk. Implementing control techniques for performance risk might involve means of guiding a team's daily work, quality control methods for new products, and measures for taking action to control problems that could influence the overall performance of a project. Third is controlling risks to cost. A project team can use control systems that might identify potential budget issues. For instance, controls for risk mitigation can include a focus on management, the decision-making process, or the identification of issues in the project's funding before problems arise. This can also provide insight into how money is being allocated, and if there is a danger of going over budget, The team can detect it in advance and take actions to limit it, such as lowering expenditure or deleting a resource that might be too expensive for the project. The fourth risk mitigation strategy is risk transference. When risks are acknowledged and considered, transference could be a suitable technique for limiting their effects. The transference approach is effective because it transfers the burden of risk and consequences to another party. However, this can have its own disadvantages, and when an organization uses this risk reduction method, this must do so in a manner that is acceptable to all stakeholders. The example that follows shows how and when risk reduction strategies use transference. First is performance transference. If, for example, a manufacturing team has created a new product, but it has faults, the product is defective. The faults cannot be due solely to manufacturing concerns, but rather to problems with materials obtained from an external source. Or, the company can pass the consequences to the outside vendor responsible for delivering the product materials by demanding the vendor to cover the expenses associated with product faults. Second is scheduling transference. While this is a risk in and of itself, transfer strategies can be utilized to place the weight of falling behind schedule on the team members responsible for time management, rather than on the company as a whole. With the consequences passed to the team members responsible for scheduling, the production team, design team, or other teams can concentrate on finishing their remaining tasks. Third is transfer for cost. Accountants and financial advisors can be held responsible for budgeting errors as part of the transfer of cost-related risks. For instance, a project that exceeds its budget can result in increased manufacturing costs and financing for supplies. If the repercussions are pushed to the finance teams responsible for budget monitoring, production managers and team members can concentrate on their jobs while the finance team addresses cost issues. The fifth risk mitigation strategy is monitor and observe risk. Monitoring projects for risks and consequences includes keeping an eye out for and recognizing any modifications that might modify the risk's effect. This method might be used as part of a typical project review plan by production teams. Cost, schedule, and performance or productivity are all factors of a project that can be monitored for potential risks that might arise throughout its execution. The following example shows methods for monitoring and evaluating risks and their potential impacts on the execution of a project. First is monitoring costs. A finance team or budget committee can examine and manage cost concerns by establishing a reporting routine that details each company's spending. This technique is effective because it enables teams to evaluate the budget and adjust any cost plans appropriately regularly. Second is monitoring schedule. Monitoring project schedules might involve weekly evaluations of each team member's tasks and the time required to fulfill each task. The team can then review and monitor any concerns that might affect the project's timeline. Software, such as calendars and project management applications, can aid in the monitoring and evaluation of time management and project scheduling. 
Third is, monitoring performance. Monitoring the performance of a project's products, team members, and resources are examples of how performance monitoring can be implemented. Evaluating and measuring many parts of a company's performance helps limit risks of a weakening, and technologies such as productivity software can aid in tracking and evaluating performance processes inside the project. The performance of employees can be monitored through the design and implementation of regular performance reviews, and the performance of products can be monitored through continuous product testing and review. This was about the top risk mitigation strategies with examples. Now, let us move on to our next topic and discuss how to create a risk mitigation plan. There are a few steps that are generally standard when building a risk mitigation strategy for most companies. Recognizing recurrent threats, prioritizing risk mitigation, and monitoring the set plan are essential components of a complete risk mitigation approach. Here are five basic stages involved in the formulation of a risk management plan. First, identify all potential risk presenting scenarios. A risk mitigation plan takes into consideration not only the goals and mission critical data security of each company, but also any risks that can develop due to the nature of the field or geographic location. A risk mitigation plan must also include the demands of an organization's employees. Second, perform a risk assessment, which includes evaluating the potential risks involved in a projected activity. Risk assessments include procedures, processes, and controls for mitigating the risk's effect. Third, prioritize risks, which includes assessing measurable risk by severity. Prioritization is a component of risk mitigation, which involves accepting a certain degree of risk in one area of the company in order to protect another better. By setting an acceptable amount of risk for various areas, a company can better prepare the necessary resources for business continuity while delaying fewer mission-critical business processes. Fourth is tracking risks. Tracking risks involves monitoring risks as their severity or importance to the company changes. It is essential to have strong metrics for monitoring the risk's evolution and the plan's capacity to fulfill compliance requirements. Fifth is to implement and monitor progress, which includes re-evaluating the plan's ability to detect risk and modifying it as necessary. In business continuity planning, plan testing is essential. Risk mitigation is identical. Once a strategy is in place, it should undergo frequent testing and analysis to ensure that it is up-to-date and performing properly. Risks confronting data centers are in a constant state of evolution. Therefore, risk mitigation strategies must account for any shifts in risk and altering priorities. So, this is how you can create a risk mitigation plan. Now, let us move on to our next topic and talk about the risk mitigation best practices. In this section, we are going to talk about some of the recommended practices for risk reduction that information security professionals should follow too. First, ensure that stakeholders are engaged at each phase. Employees, management, unions, shareholders, and customers are examples of stakeholders. For the development of a complete, holistic risk mitigation plan, all views are important. Second, create a robust risk management culture. This requires conveying from the top down the values, attitudes, and beliefs around risk and compliance. Risk awareness is essential for every employee, but the likelihood of a strong culture is significantly increased when management sets the tone. It is essential to create an environment in which team members feel at ease raising concerns to upper management without fear. You should escalate one problem at a time to a single stakeholder, and you should not include stakeholders that are not affected by the issue. When escalating concerns, one should assess the problem's severity, provide contextual information, and then recommend remedial methods. Next, communicate risks as they emerge. Risk awareness must be high across the whole business. Thus, it is essential to keep everyone informed through enabling communication of new, high-impact risks. Next, ensure that the risk management policy is understandable so that workers can commit to it. Roles and duties should be well-defined, and each identified risk requires a well-defined procedure for handling it. Next, continuously monitor potential dangers. In order to continually enhance the risk mitigation strategy, risk monitoring methods should also be properly established and applied. The next best practice is to adopt improved planning criteria for technical work. Time is crucial for every project, and planning can help you manage time throughout the project. Better scheduling and estimates will assist the risk manager in increasing their success rate when dealing with technical tasks in particular. Define and evaluate quality criteria throughout the life cycle of the project. In creative projects, the quality level of a project is of utmost importance. In each step of a project's life cycle, Standards and criteria must be defined in order to ensure quality. 
Throughout the project life cycle, a project manager should have a clear understanding of what constitutes quality based on the criteria acceptable to every stakeholder, particularly those on both sides who must sign off on the final deliverables. The following are ways to do so. First, separate the project into several stages. Second is to establish objective quality measuring standards. Third, is document and communicate the procedures with all parties involved. Fourth is establish quality standards upon which all stakeholders can agree. Fifth, when possible, support statements with data. Lastly, form an emergency response team. This is another effective practice for project risk management. Occasionally, a stakeholder can withdraw funds, resulting in the failure of a crucial technological component. Therefore, the risk management team should consist of experienced people with broad access to project planning and risk management. When errors occur, the team should have the necessary experience and training to rescue the project. Essentially, your risk response team should prepare contingency plans for the worst case scenarios. So, these were some of the risk mitigation best practices. Now, let us move on to our final topic for today and talk about the risk mitigation tools. One of the tools is the risk assessment framework. A risk assessment framework is a regularly used risk reduction strategy. An RAF offers an organization a summary of which systems provide a high or low risk, as well as information for both technical and non-technical staff. By offering standardized risk assessment and reporting methodologies, an RAF can be used as a risk reduction instrument. Other typical risks mitigating methods include a probability and impact matrix. The probability and impact matrix is a secondary tool for project managers. It helps prioritize risk, which is crucial since you don't want to spend time and resources addressing a small risk. This method rates individual risks according to their severity by combining their likelihood and effect values. Thus, each risk is recognized in the context of the whole project, and a strategy is in place to respond if it occurs. Next tool is SWOT analysis. A SWOT analysis is a framework for identifying and assessing the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats of an organization. These terms include the acronym SWOT. The fundamental objective of SWOT analysis is to raise awareness of the factors that influence company decisions and the formulation of corporate strategies. So, to do this, the SWOT analysis evaluates the internal and external environment, as well as the elements that might influence the viability of choice. An entity should conduct a SWOT analysis to get insight into its existing and future position in the market or in reference to a stated objective. Using this study, Organizations or individuals can identify competitive advantages, positive prospects, and current and future difficulties. With this knowledge, they can formulate business strategies or personal or organizational objectives to capitalize on strengths and address weaknesses. The next tool, a root cause analysis or RCA is a technique for determining the underlying reason for a seen or experienced occurrence. An RCA focuses on the why, how, and when of the incident's causal components. Typically, a business will undertake a root cause analysis or RCA to identify the root cause of an issue and prevent it from occurring again. When a system fails or changes, investigators should do a root cause analysis to understand the occurrence and its causes thoroughly. Beyond problem solving, which is corrective action conducted when an event happens, root cause analysis is the next stage. In contrast, an RCA identifies the fundamental cause of a problem. An RCA analyzes all contributing variables to a problem linking events in a meaningful manner so that the issue can be effectively treated and avoided from repeating. It is only possible to figure out how, when, and why an issue originated if one identifies the problem source, rather than concentrating on its symptoms. In addition to having a thorough awareness of internal requirements and resources, external expertise can be a valuable addition to a risk mitigation strategy. Several business continuity and disaster recovery providers or data recovery have a focus on risk reduction and even smaller enterprises can use data recovery as a service vendor to keep costs relatively low. I would like to conclude the session by saying, avoid, accept, reduce, control, or transfer. Businesses will be required to address each and every risk they come across. A little planning and effort provide more possibilities than a product recall or bankruptcy filing. Within the risk management framework of your organization, there should be both knowledge of the different techniques and an understanding of their execution standards. Every day, engineers and management across the business make risk-related choices. Providing a set of clear strategies together with direction enables the whole organization to manage risks every day in an appropriate manner. With this, we have come to an end of this video, I hope it was helpful. Comment your thoughts in the section below. 
Do subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the notification bell, never to miss an update from the Invensys Learning Channel. Also, to learn more about project management and its practices, check out Invensys Learning's Project Management Certification Training on PRINCE2, Project Management Fundamentals, and MSP. All of the necessary information is given in the description box below. Thank you. Have a nice day.